why do witches always look so angry? And it's because they have resting witch face. What's going on YouTube? You guys asked and I'm here to provide. We are finally doing our dungeon tier list for the Elder Scrolls Online. Originally, I was in between. Do I want to do the DLC ones and the base game ones separately? But I looked and I was like, well, people watched our 40 some odd minute video yesterday with all of the zones. So I think we can continue to kind of do them all at once. But I'm going to try to put chapters in it for this one. I refused to do the one yesterday for each individual zone because some were like 20 seconds long. But for here, I will do the chapters just for you guys because I love you. So here we have the tier list and I want to kind of run you guys through what in my opinion is perfect dungeon what's an average dungeon and what's a hurts my soul dungeon hurts my soul is frost vault hard mode but we're going to be talking about dungeons in all facets which is important because a lot of times I think we think of ourselves as like well the sets there are either good or bad you can either get good or bad rewards either personalities or skins or sometimes they don't have those sometimes they have titles that are hot garbage Sometimes the mechanics are fun, sometimes the dungeons are too long, sometimes the bosses are really tedious and annoying, sometimes the monster sets are good, sometimes they're garbage. We are going to try to cram all of what I just said into a rating. So we're going to kind of go over all of those things, kind of generally, we're not gonna to get too deep into each individual dungeon. If you're interested in specific dungeon guides, I'm certainly willing to do types of content like that, but I think holistically, we're gonna be looking at rewards, whether that's titles, achievements, some of have furnishings, motives, sets, monster sets, etc. Are the mechanics good, bad? Does it take too long? Is the fungin, the fungin, the dungeon annoying? You know, do you want to rip your hair out if you're queuing for a random daily dungeon and this one pops up? Do you do you cry to yourself softly at night? Probably gonna lose some points even if the rewards are good. So a perfect dungeon is a dungeon that has good rewards and has good mechanics. A average dungeon is one where if you get queued in it, you just think to yourself, all right, nothing I'm looking for here, but it's not terrible. Skippable is if you want to farm this dungeon, it's going to hurt your soul because it's either long and boring and the rewards are bad. It hurts my soul is it hurts. If I get queued for this, my heart hurts. And we're going to start off with a bit of a litmus test, and that is actually Black Drake Villa. So you guys know exactly where I am when it comes to how these are going to be ranked. To me, Black Drake Villa is a perfect dungeon it's got skippable mechanics but it's also got side secret bosses that you can farm i won't spoil anything for you but the actual dungeon itself is very fun but it's also rewarding true sworn kinraz drake's rust behemoth are all great sets that you can farm uh the motifs that drop from there have decent sell rates so if you're wondering to yourself dungeons have motifs it's not just the style pages that every so often will pop up you know based on what's in the crown store it's also that if you farm the hard mode you're guaranteed to get a motif drop or if you just complete the dungeon uh, you have a lower chance to get that motif so there's a little bit of ways that you can get a little bit of extra gold when you're farming your dungeons but overall the only thing that i think it loses points on is there's really no cool skin personality that comes from black drake villa but really that's minor in the grand scheme of things. And even if you would take points for that, I'd still have it in the perfect tier. Next up, we have Bal Sonar, which is an interesting one because I think it does some things right, some things wrong. I always like alternative bosses, alternative routes and things, but the rewards are decent, but they're not great in my opinion. What I would describe them is, is as good. I have a higher expectations for dungeons that come out more recently because as power creep continues, you really should be getting a lot more rewards for doing dungeons. And for the length of time it does take for you to complete this one, I would want better rewards than just the sets that come from here. Notably, Wright Masters is pretty decent, but overall it's nothing to write home about. But where it does get some bonus points is you do get a skin uh, your first completion. So if you want a really cool skin, you guys can go out and complete Balsanar on Veteran. This next one is a bit of an interesting one too because it's going to go also right up there with Bal Sinar. Loses a couple points but gains a couple points. So let's talk about it. Lady Thorn is going to be your monster set that you're going to get from here. It used to be a lot better than where it currently sees itself. I even looked up to see what its current rankings are amongst tanking, 
uh, people see it as a two out of five, according to the Tank Club, which is really the go-to whenever I want to see how good a support set is for tanking and other such things. I would say, though, that Crimson Twilight that drops from here is pretty good. Uh, I think it's actually a really good set if you're interested in that Cyrodiilic type uh, fighting for PvP. So that's a pretty decent set to farm here. The reason that it gains a couple points for me is actually the rewards that you get. You get a skin and you get a really cool gargoyle. And I'm going to show you guys something that you might not necessarily know about when you do certain DLC dungeons. And that's that, as you can see here, you can get a reanimated Vampiric Thrall uh, skin uh, by completing it essentially on veteran uh, but you also get a nice little reward too: castle thorn gargoyle 25,000 gold what those are for those of you who aren't aware every single zone in the entirety of ESO has furniture that you can buy based on achievements that you have unlocked so what you can do is you can get some really cool achievements from the undaunted and the undaunted vendor will have furnishings that you could buy I know it's a very niche thing, but there's some ones that actually look very cool there, and that's going to elevate it up there with Balsinar. It is a bit of a longer dungeon, a little bit more painful, uh, but overall it's still pretty good. It just loses points for its sets, loses points for its length. Next up, we have the dungeon that used to basically only be farmed for Elemental Catalyst until Elemental Catalyst had been replaced. It does still have some niche utilization. However, when you look at a dungeon holistically, you don't want the main reason to farm a dungeon to just be a set that's one or two patches, uh, two meta previous. So when you look at the other rewards that you get from there, which is really just mementos and some titles that really not a lot of people are using to flex or show off, the motifs that drop from there are fairly good, uh, but that's really all that you're going to get. It's a long dungeon. I will say the mechanics are fun, at least. I think that's where it bumps up to average, at least, uh, based on the length, because this is a lengthier dungeon that you're going to have to do. Next up, we actually have a dungeon that the mechanics I thought that I would originally dislike, but I actually ended up really liking it, and that is Scrivener's Hall. So Scrivener's Hall is notably used to farm Rune Carver's Blaze, which is a fairly good set. It has some really fun mechanics inside of them, and I actually found myself enjoying my time there. Uh, but where it loses points is, is that there's really no good skins, personalities, rewards for going and getting those uh, achievements inside the dungeon. And to me, that's why it's going to be a good dungeon, because it's got good rewards, but it doesn't have great rewards. Next up, we have Graven Deep, which has some really cool elements to it and some decent rewards, and it's going to go up as a good dungeon. I really wish that they added more for the achievements that you can do here, because I think it's a really fun dungeon to be in, and really the notable rewards are like a hermit crab pet and a wall that you can use to like almost make it look like you're looking out into the ocean. And those are things that are cool, don't get me wrong, uh, but when you have a brand new dungeon, one of the more recent ones, you really want to see a little bit more rewards for farming it on the set side. You really want to see some best in slot things in there. I will say, you know, sets like Pangrit, Den Mother are certainly not bad by any means, and you can find utilization for them, but I don't want to be searching for a utilization for a dungeon set that is a bit lengthier, uh, unfortunately. So that's why it's going to go in the good dungeon. Next up, we have Earth Root Enclave, which is going to be, for me, a great dungeon. Now, the reason why it goes into the great dungeon category is it has one of the best-in-slot support monster sets in the game, which is Arch Druid. It's really good. I highly encourage you guys to get it if you're interested in that support role, specifically usually uh, tanking. What I would say, too, is this dungeon is actually fairly fun. It's very scenic. The sets there are, besides the monster set, are decent. Uh, the motif pages that you can get by doing, you know, the hard modes uh, sell very well, uh, at least for right now. Obviously, as the dungeon kind of progresses and gets older and we have really weird events, you know, like the Jubilee event where people can get it, it will go down in value. But overall, if you're looking for a fun dungeon to farm and get a good profitable motif on hard mode, if that's what your shindig is and you want to have one of the best in slot tank sets, go do some Earth and Root Enclave, which is Earth and Groot. It's not Earth Root, I promise. <laughs> Here's where I become slightly conflicted, and that is with Coral Eerie, because Coral Eerie does not do anything well. It's got one of the hardest hard modes, some of the least amount of rewards for completing a hard mode, completing it on Veteran. The sets there are very mediocre at best. So part of me wants to put it in the average dungeon, uh, but I'm actually going to put it down in skippable, because... When you're a newer dungeon like Coral Eerie is comparatively to some of the other ones on here, we have higher expectations. 
there are secret things and things that you can do, but when the best rewards are just generic titles, it really goes to show that you really have to make sure that you've, you've upped your game. You know, as, as we kind of said earlier, Black Drake Villa, in my opinion, is the standard. You want to have good rewards and you want to have good mechanics. Coral Erie has stupid mechanics and low tier rewards, and that's why it's going to go in the skippable tier for me. Take a little guess where Shipwright's Regret's going to go, and if you picked the top of the perfect dungeon tier so far, you would be correct. When it comes to Shipwright's Regret, you have one of the best monster sets in the game, you've got some of the best sets in the game, including Turning Tide, even Storm Curse Revenge is also a great one, and you've got alternative uh, dungeon parts that you can farm. You have skippable bosses. If you want to do the actual hidden mechanics and things, you can. If you just want to get to the meat and potatoes and have a fast dungeon, you can also have it. To me, that is perfect. You've got great rewards. You've got a great way to farm it where you can do it quickly, or you can take the time to go through and do the little secret side things, but you don't have to. And if you complete it and you do the undaunted achievement, you get a little nice little lantern lamp thing that like glows green. It's beautiful. And I highly encourage you guys to do Shipwright's Regret. If not for the sets that you probably are going to want, Turning Tide and the monster set from there are definitely both S tier sets. But because it's just a beautiful dungeon to be in, it's very unique. And I think it's great. And along those same lines, but to a lesser degree, just under the Black Drake Villa, we have the Dread Cellar. The Dread Cellar is an amazing dungeon. It's also got great sets magma incarnate is definitely a monster set that you're going to want but even sets like crimson oath i think rush of agony and even scorn's feast are all decent sets some of them are even great sets for you to have overall i highly encourage you guys to do the dread seller even the secret mechanics it's back to that same kind of formula where if you want to do side content and puzzles you can if you want to get to the meat and potatoes you can also Next, one of the goofiest sets you can find in the Red Petal Bastion. Uh, puts a bunch of sweet rolls everywhere, and for that, I mean, that's got to put it up in the good du dungeons category. I, I think that overall Red Petal Bastion doesn't do anything phenomenally well. Uh, the rewards don't jump out at me as something, you know, like the Dread Cellar, Black Drake Villa, Shipwrights, even Earthroot Enclave, uh, and even the actual achievement rewards really don't leave a whole lot to desire. The motif that drops from doing the hard mode or, you know, or lower chance if you do it on a lower difficulty don't jump out at me it is still a good dungeon though and that's going to be at the bottom of the good tier for now one of the most valuable items in the game comes from the cauldron but only during specific times of the year only when its monster style is in store i'm going to put it up though however in the great tier i think that overall there's a lot of great things in this dungeon the fact that it's monster set page style sells for like 75 million gold on PC and tens of millions of gold on console is pretty phenomenal. And if you beat it on veteran, you get a great skin. There's not a whole lot else to really write home about with this dungeon. I think we can kind of summarize it very quickly in that. Uh, but it is really fun to farm and it overall I think is a good experience and if you're definitely and I'll, I'll make a video on it when the monster style is farmable you will see a video it'll probably be clickbaity like how to farm this dungeon and become a multi-millionaire because you will I mean it's not really clickbait you will uh, so you guys will know as soon as that style page returns and the developers will probably make all sorts of posts about it because for those of you who don't know it is the most valuable style page in the game hands down no competition and now we get into some of the non DLC dungeons which actually took us a little while to get here so this is where things are going to kind of change just a little bit I'm not going to be comparing you know, Banished Cells versus Shipwrights Regret. I'm going to be comparing them almost to other base game dungeons because a lot of you guys only might have access to base game dungeons. So for me, Banished Cells is actually a good dungeon. This is Banished Cells 1. Uh, the reason why I think that this one specifically is good is because it's got a good monster set and it's a very good introductory set. If you're farming on a low level character, you might only be able to queue for Banished Cells 1. And because of that, it's pretty good. We're also going to put Banished Cells 2 up here but it's going to go in the average dungeon. The monster set is just worse. Uh, it is more long, more difficult, not like difficult in anything that's going to really throw you for a loop. But when it comes to, you know, those early base game dungeons, we like things that are fast and easy and efficient. And it just adds just a little bit more to it without giving us any additional rewards. Fallen Fell is an interesting one because on one hand, it's got one of the best monster sets in the game in Tremor Scale. Uh, but it doesn't have a whole lot else, so it is also going to comfortably go 
right up here in the good dungeon if you're interested in a very beautiful looking dungeon with a great monster set volunfell is definitely a good dungeon but when it comes to additional things like sets and rewards you might want to get you're not really going to get that and unfortunately too for a lot of these base game dungeons you're not even going to get motifs for doing the hard mode really the only thing you're going to get from them is if you got it coming up on an undaunted pledge you could get two keys and we're going to get our next average and that is Celine. it's by no means a bad dungeon it's monster set by no means is bad uh, it's actually a decent dps set but that's really all you can say about it is decent and when you have sets that are just decent and are okay and are usually outshined by other things and you don't have any exceptional rewards from the dungeon itself you have to go eh, average this next one is also going to be in the average tier which is vaults of madness vaults of madness doesn't do anything exceptional it is a base game zone so i don't want to necessarily think that it's you know skippable uh, because it did come out you know with the eso base game it's nothing really there that's going to make you go oh you know i really need to get this it's monster sets are okay it's sets are okay and overall average dungeon next we're going to have our first skippable of the base game but we are going to however bump up its predecessor way rest sewer 2 only because of slime crawler to the good dungeon tier the only reason we're really doing that though is, is because it's simplistic it's something that you can overall pretty easily accomplish. Uh, the sets there are actually the same uh, versus, but you really are gonna want slime crawl, uh, even if you're just wearing it as a one piece for the crit chance. It is something you're probably gonna wanna have either the helmet of or the shoulder of at some point. It is a base game dungeon, so we are comparing it towards other base game ones, and when it's got Wayrest Sewers 2 at least, one of the best monster sets in the game, you gotta put, have to put it in the good tier. We're going to have to make our box here a little smaller. And actually, have Arx Corneum, which is the first dungeon that I have ever 100% gotten all the collections of. And we're going to put it in the Hurts My Soul. Why does it hurt my soul, Arx Corneum? It's because Medusa used to be great, and now it's just okay at best. It's okay set. You sit and you farm a dungeon before the collection system exists. And you just, just to get that Medusa Flame Staff, and now it's garbage. It hurts my soul. Should you go to Arx Cornium to farm it? Probably not. If it comes up in a daily pledge, yeah, you go ahead and farm it and you know do it for your undaunted keys. But don't do it on your own of your own free will. I, you couldn't pay me to go back there. I hate it. This is going to be a little bit of a hot take here, but City of Ash 1 and 2 are both perfect dungeons. This is probably going to be a little bit crazy, but when you look at base game dungeons, right, and you look at some of the earlier ones that are easy for you to complete, like City of Ash 1, being able to complete a dungeon and also get really good sets from it is just phenomenal. And then City of Ash 2 just kind of builds on that, teaches you some more mechanics, almost teaches you kind of to the difference between like normal and veteran, because a lot of people don't necessarily know if you're coming in from another game where dungeons if you go from a harder difficulty is just everything has more health there's more mechanics and you start to learn that through these dungeons when you do them uh, the rewards are also pretty good you do share your normal three base sets but Valken scoria is going to be what you get from city of ash 2 uh, which is notably great and when it's style page is sellable it's probably in the top three best monster set style pages that do sell once it comes up so overall city of ash one and two are going in the perfect dungeon tier now when it comes to ones like elden hollow i think we have to put them as average dungeons nothing that they do is exceptional the rewards are okay it is technically a base game one but when it comes to your one and two ranked ones I just think overall that a lot more could have been done with them. It's, it suffers from the base game, unfortunate, you know, limbo of, well, the sets are obviously going to be replaced by the DLC ones. But when you start thinking about sets, you know, like the ones from City of Ash and even the ones from like Wayrest Sewers, the monster sets, you really start to think, you know, there are still a lot of sets that hang around in meta relevancy. You don't see that as much in uh, some of these dungeons and Yielding Hollow just falls in that category. We're actually going to put Fungal Grotto up in the perfect dungeon tier and then Fungal Grotto 2 in the average dungeon tier. Fungal Grotto 1 is like the funniest dungeon to me because you can complete it in about 90 to 120 seconds. So when things like the Undaunted event come out or any event where you get bonuses for completing dungeons, it's like the go-to area. And to me, that's what I want in a Fungal. That's what I want in a starter dungeon. Fungal Grotto is the perfect starter dungeon to me when it comes to the mechanics of it. It's fast. 
it's efficient, it helps break down those barriers because a lot of you guys might not know if you're more seasoned players, but a lot of people are intimidated by dungeons. An exceptional amount of people are intimidated by them. So telling them that they can complete a dungeon in two to three minutes, even if they don't necessarily know what they're doing, and they just have you know other group of people who will show them the skips and stuff, that's pretty incentivizing for people who don't want to go into dungeons because they're too afraid to go, yeah, you know, I, I'll farm this dungeon. You know, I'll see what, you know, dungeon farming is about. So even though the rewards aren't anything to write home about, it is going to go in the perfect dungeon category for me. Another great example of being introductory towards newer players is Darkshade Caverns 1. And then unfortunately, its predecessor, Darkshade Caverns 2, is going to go down in the average tier. The main difference to me is, is that ones versus twos are supposed to build upon each other i don't think dungeon or dark shade caverns 2 really does a good job of that the rewards for its monster set are not better versus dark shade caverns 1 which gives you engine guardian which is like a really good set uh especially as a brand new player who's learning to do dungeons so to me that's why there's such a discrepancy between the two even though they do share their normal other sets there uh, also, Darkshade Caverns 1 is an exceptionally fast dungeon, whereas Darkshade Caverns 2 is not. And again, I'm refixing this on the screen so it can all be seen at once. And next we have Spindle Clutch 1, which I am going to hot take, also going to put in the perfect dungeon tier. It is a good dungeon. It gives you one of the best in slot, if not what was the best in slot, uh, monster set, which is Blood Spawn. So there'll be people who are like, Jake is literally putting Spindle Clutch 1... Is a perfect dungeon and to me yes why because it's introductory it's fast and it gives you the best in slot monster set and it if it was not the best in slot right now it's certainly top five top ten and for years it was the best in slot you cannot go wrong with putting uh, the actual blood spawn set on a pvp set if you want to you know even do pve content like getting into farming dungeons there's nothing wrong with wearing blood spawn it's overall a great set and i highly encourage you guys to get it and get you into there unfortunately its predecessor is fairly average swarm mother is okay there's nothing really to write home about it that's the monster set that comes from the two it's not long to farm thankfully unlike dark shade caverns too they were like ah, pff, we'll make this stupid boss in dark shade caverns that reflects damage back at you and you have to sit there the whole time and take it and you can't speed run through it very easily versus they didn't make that same mistake uh, so i'm going to bump it above dark shade caverns but it doesn't do anything to write home about so it's going to sit in the average dungeon tier crypt of hearts used to really have a special place in my heart it is one of the easier dungeons to do so we're going to put it at the top of the good dungeon tier and then we're going to put crypt of hearts 2 in the average dungeon tier i think that the sets from there have really kind of they, they used to be so good. Leviathan, Shroud of the Lich, even Eben used to be something that people would use. It had a lot of utility to them. You just don't see that as much anymore, which is really unfortunate because they're very easy to farm. It's just the rewards just don't stack up. I will say, obviously, though, Crypt of Hearts is very fast. It's one of the starter dungeons, very easy. That's why it's much higher than Crypt of Hearts 2. Next up, hot take, but Cradle of Shadows is a great dungeon. Well, you might be thinking to yourself, Jake, this is a little crazy here. Cradle of Shadows, great dungeon. The monster set's okay. The other rewards are okay. Well, it's got some things going for it that people sometimes forget. And that's the fact that you can get not only a skin, but a personality from farming this dungeon. And those are two of the best rewards that, in my opinion, you can get from a dungeon, which makes it a great dungeon. It's not painful. They actually do a great job of teaching you mechanics before the boss fight comes up. And as this was one of the more older you know dlc dungeons you know they were still kind of getting into a pattern of doing that and they did a great job in this dungeon so i can confidently give it a great dungeon tier some people might disagree if you don't value skins and personalities as highly i totally understand that uh, so for you then it could might just be a good dungeon next up we have another bit of a hot take and that is runes of mazatune runes of mazatune has got one of the best monster sets one of the best set sets and amber plasm so you might be thinking this is an easy, perfect dungeon, but it is so ungodly long. I'm putting it at the top of the great dungeon tier. Runes of Mazatune overstays its welcome, in my opinion, with bosses that have unskippable mechanics. And it can really start to drag if you are farming it. I will say, though, that it's got a great skin, and it also has the ability to get a personality from it. It's actually this one or the Cradle of Shadows. 
uh, you can get the heroic personality in just by going into that dungeon. Uh, so overall, it's a great dungeon, and I can encourage you guys to go into it, but it is painful to farm, and that's where it loses that points where it could have gone into the perfect dungeon tier. This next one's interesting, and that is actually Imperial City Prison, which I'm going to put at the top of the good dungeon tier. I really do like Leeching. I think it's one of the coolest sets in the game. Uh, I think overall the dungeon itself is pretty fun. Uh, I think that there's some unique mechanics. It's not painful. The boss is there. It is a little bit long. I do think that it kind of overstays its welcome sometimes just a little bit if you are looking to farm uh, some of the sets there. You know, even even Sheer Venom and Scathing Mage are not too bad. Every set there I think is at least decent if not good and definitely if you're looking for a good set leeching is definitely a good set for you to use i also like how they implemented the key fragments mechanics into it i thought that was very well done and overall i can suggest it as a good dungeon when the white gold tower came out it was definitely a power spike for all players in eso and it definitely became one of the harder dungeons to farm for us until power creep inevitably caught up White Gold Tower introduces a lot of cool mechanics, but also some great sets. Notably, Spell Power Cure is definitely a set that you probably want. And even Malakina, I think, is exceptionally slept upon based on how easy it is to add and weave into different proc sets if you're interested in doing some sort of proc burst combos. To me, it's a great dungeon. Uh, when you have the ability to utilize key fragments, it's got a really fun kind of farming mechanics when you're doing it. It's very interactive with you and your friends. It is a little bit hard if people don't know what they're doing, but once you've kind of gotten into that rhythm, it's definitely fun and interesting. And overall, I can definitely tell you it's a great dungeon and it gives you a cool dye color as well. Next is Dire Frost Keep, which I'm going to say is another great dungeon. I think Ice Heart is a great monster set that has really stood the test of time. I really wish that other sets were able to do as well overall, uh, like Ice Heart. And then you have sets like uh, Draugr Hulk, which is basically, you know, a crafty Alfeek version for stamina, which not a lot of people talk about, and I think it's a really good set. It doesn't do anything phenomenally well in this dungeon, but it's fast, it's got good sets, and overall, because of that, it's a great dungeon to me. And I almost have the exact same things to say about Tempest Island. I think that, you know, when you look at sets that are still kind of being able to be used in, in unique and fun ways, you see that in Tempest Island. These are both base game dungeons that have stood the test of time. They don't do anything cool like the newer, flashier dungeons with secret mechanics and things. That hasn't been implemented yet, obviously, but... If you're looking for two great dungeons, I put them about equal in my head. I remember a day and age when Blackheart Haven was one of the most farmed monster sets in the game. People loved things like Bone Pirate, and it was great. Unfortunately, sets like Bone Pirate don't see a whole lot of utilization anymore. The Pirate Skeleton monster set doesn't see a whole lot of utilization anymore. But I will say, though, that it's got unique scenery. It's fun to kind of go through. It's very easy, you know, if you're looking for a dungeon that kind of is fun and like a piratey type theme. Uh, the sets there are certainly not bad by any means. You know, sets like Bone Pirate are still good if you're looking for a set like that for PvP. Pirate Skeleton is certainly a good monster set. It just doesn't see the utilization that it used to, which was significant. And if you want to talk about a set that's fallen from grace, talk about Blessed Crucible. Troll King, whoo! With the health recovery changes, Troll King is just, ew, it's unfortunately fallen very far. Uh, not a lot to say about Blessed Crucible. I think it's overall just a very plain average dungeon. Uh, it is faster than all these other ones here, uh, with little exception. Uh, and the monster set is not as good as some of these were. I'll probably restructure this uh, towards the end here, because there's a whole lot of dungeons that we've been kind of putting in here. But overall, Blessed Crucible is just one of those dungeons that's just average. Ice Reach is another one of those dungeons where I think it doesn't do anything phenomenally well, uh, but it does get the ball rolling for teaching you mechanics. The sets there are certainly by no means bad. I think Titanborn Strength is actually slept on. I'm going to go against my better judgment and bump it up just to the good dungeon tier. I think that if you're comparing it, to some of those earlier DLC dungeons that were released. It really was kind of doing some really cool things. I think Titanborn Strength is a really niche set, and it's kind of unique if you're looking for like a you know, glass cannon, keep your health low type build. And there's a lot of fun things that you can do with stuff like that. But overall, I mean, it is just a good dungeon. The rewards don't jump out at you. You can get a style page uh, to look like Lyris with her weapon. 
Uh, that's kind of neat as a reward. But overall, it's just lower end of good. Next up, we have March of Sacrifice, which is hard because a lot of people really want that monster set. Balorgs, and for a lot of things, is considered best in slot. However, there's a reason why a lot of people want to buy it, and that is because the mechanics there to a pug group is like trying to read hieroglyphics uh, while you're blind. And that can be pretty problematic. So rewards wise, I think it's great. However, the actual design of the dungeon itself really kind of hinders it. And that's where I'm going to put it at the bottom of the great dungeon tier. I think when you have some of the best in slot stuff, you really have to give it those extra points. But you can just as fast take them away uh, because of the difficulty. It doesn't do a great job, I think, of teaching players mechanics as they're going through them. I think that Zenimax really did a better job, you know, in some of its later dungeons, kind of teaching you mechanics as they come up. So overall... Great dungeon with good rewards, but not anything to write home about. I will say, too, it's secondary rewards from its achievements are also good. But then again, when you have to farm something that's exceptionally difficult, you can kind of lose those points back again. So that's why it's going to sit right in the great tier, really uh, fighting between that perfect and good dungeon tier. And we're officially getting to the point where it's not going to all fit on screen at the same time, unfortunately. Moon Hunter is an interesting one. I think it's going to go smack dab in the good tier. I think Moon Hunter has some pretty cool things like the Moon Hunter uh, set, which is pretty cool. It's also got some really unique rewards tied to it, you know, personalities, cool titles and things. And that's why I'm going to put it a little bit higher. Uh, it is, if you compare it to other DLC dungeons, really riding on that low good dungeon to really high average dungeon it doesn't do anything exceptionally phenomenal and it is long uh, unfortunately it was one of the longer dun dungeons when it came out and i think a lot of people were off put by that when people were queuing into it as the random daily they were leaving immediately and that caused problems so that really shouldn't be used against it but i'm kind of using it against it even though it's got some good rewards tied to it and next up is Bloodroot, and when you have sets that are considered some of the best in the game, you got to put it in the Great Dungeon tier, and it is going to go in the Great Dungeon tier up there uh, with the best of them. And uh, the reason for that is because of Earthgore, and even the other sets there that drop there are all fairly decent too. It is a DLC dungeon, so you would hope that it would have good things tied to it. And really, it actually delivers on those promises. It does lose a couple points, in my opinion, by how hard it is for pug groups to be able to complete it. I don't think, again, that it does a really good job of teaching the mechanics to newer players. And I am going to kind of keep it out of the perfect dungeon tier for that. Plus, there, the secondary rewards aren't as exciting. But overall, I can definitely tell you that it is a great dungeon to get one of the best monster sets from. And here's a dungeon that actually I think does a pretty good job of teaching mechanics as they come up, and that is Unhallowed Grave. And because of that, it's going to go up in the good dungeon tier. Overall, I think that Unhallowed Grave is not exceptional at doing anything specific, but it's got a really good style page that you can usually sell for a good click of money when it pops up. The sets there are fairly decent the secondary rewards are okay and the, but the actual dungeon design itself is great and that's where you're going to average out all those things and you're going to get end up with a good dungeon experience layer of marcelock is exceptionally hard for me to rank because it probably should be in the perfect dungeon tier but i can't put it in the perfect dungeon tier it's got some of the best sets in the game all right let's just get that out of the way i think sets like zens azure blight marcelock are almost perfect however this dungeon itself is way too long, and it does not do a good job of teaching the mechanics as you go for some of it. For some of it is good at teaching. For other parts, it's very exceptionally annoying and long. The skips on there, I believe they actually patched one of the skips that you used to be able to do, which is also exceptionally annoying. So from a dungeon design perspective, I would say that it's a good dungeon. From a rewards perspective, it's a perfect dungeon. And I think that's where you kind of culminate together and you get yourself a great dungeon. Another dungeon that is painful to farm, uh, but also has some decent rewards tied to it is Moongrave Fane. However, things like Hollow First, Hollow Fang's Thirst are not going to be as good as they once were. I do think, though, the design itself, aesthetically, the fights itself are pretty decent. And for me, that's why it's going to go into the good dungeon tier. But this is also one that suffers from that length problem. That length problem, by the way, that they would solve in the future by adding kind of secret mechanics that you could farm versus having to just farm the same bosses over and over and over again. And I think that these were some of the dungeons that kind of made the developers start to look at that and go, ooh, you know, maybe we should start making some of this stuff 
optional <laughs> because these are long and people have to farm these dozens of times to complete the collections. This next one is gonna go and hurts my soul. If you know, you know. I don't know why you have to turn into a mouse. I don't know whose idea that was. I don't know what they were smoking down there in you know, Baltimore where ZeniMax's studio is. I don't know what was happening. Whoever made that mechanic, I hate you. I will say though that the actual sets and the rewards from there are not bad by any means. They're actually fairly good. However, doing this hard mode hurt me in ways I didn't know possible. And it's gonna go in the hurt my souls tier just because of that. My cat has joined us for Depths of Malatar because Depths of Malatar to me is actually up there as a perfect dungeon. Depths of Malatar does so many things right in my opinion. And the reason for that is because it gives you great rewards. One of the best in slot monster sets, you get skins, You've got easy ability to get through the dungeon, very nice design, very rewarding final boss fight, and a great monster set to go with it. It's everything that I look for when I'm thinking about how I want my dungeons to look. This next one is another one that has hurt my soul, and that is Fang Lair, and because that's going to hurt my souls, it's really just because of the actual uh, final boss fight. I don't know what they were smoking again. Uh, but the actual rewards from here are okay. Uh, for what you have to do, though, you would expect them to be a little bit better. It's also a, a decently long dungeon uh, when it had came out. So I would say that if it wasn't in Hurt My Souls, it would probably just be an average dungeon. Hillcaller Peak is another one of those places that has one of the best monster sets in the game. But fun fact, nobody ever wants to go get it because it sucks to get it. Uh, because they do not do a good job of teaching you about the rewards. So while I would say the sets from here make it an amazing dungeon, it is held back by good dungeon design and that it does not teach you very well what you're supposed to be doing and has some very annoying, tedious mechanics to it. And Zenimax sometimes I think forgets that really it's when people do dungeons, it's just a random bunch of hooligans queuing together who have zero communication skills and don't want to get into an Xbox party together. And because of that, it's going to lose some points, but definitely the rewards from Scale Caller Peak are well up there. A dungeon, however, that does not overstay its welcome is actually Falk Wreath Hold. I think Falk Wreath does a great job of what it wants to do. It gives you great sets, it gives you that veteran experience, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. Iron Blood and Pillar of Nern are definitely going to be great rewards for you to get by completing this dungeon, as well as the other titles and things that go along with it. It's a great dungeon. It is a DLC dungeon that really starts to do what DLC dungeons should be when they don't have alternative boss fights that you can skip. Ulkreath Hold is a great example of that. But as I've constantly been struggling to fit this bad boy on screen, now you can see the entirety of the tier list for all of the dungeons. This is the most controversial tier list I've ever made. Nobody's going to fight over the beauty of Somerset if I put it in S tier and the zone story quest of Ardoran dropping it down to whatever tier. But this, people have opinions about dungeons. And I put Spindle Clutch 1 in S tier. And I put Layer of Marcelock as a great dungeon. I put March of Sacrifice as a great dungeon. I, and I put Fang Lair as a Hurts My Soul and Wayrest Sewers and Coral Eerie and Skippable. There are going to be people who are like, well, why is not Crypto Hearts 2 skippable? And it's like, well, you know, the, the actual time if you wanted to do it, you know, is not bad. You know, I'm not going to skip it. A whole lot of subjectivity to this list. And this is probably one where I'm going to wake up tomorrow and go, oh, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I put Fungal Grotto in the S tier just because of how user-friendly it is and how good it is to farm during events with dungeons. Ooh, ooh. But I think it's important to scale these and remember that a lot of these came out at different times and it's hard to base, you know, something that came out, you know, six years ago versus six months ago. I think our expectations have to be different and when sets and things hold up and mechanics hold up, you know, six years later, I really do think that we have to hold uh, some of these dungeons to a, a higher degree. And I think we have to hold some of them to a lesser degree. So I know that I'm going to get yelled at in the comments. Tell me what sets I missed as being S plus tier in dungeons. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Because we are still doing our three giveaway drawings. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed. We are almost at 42% subscription, over double what YouTube's average is. So I just want to thank you guys for being subscribed. The second thing, you have to just leave a like on the video. Uh, we used to do comments, but I always feel like 
make writing a comment can you know be a little bit more tedious just slap a like on those videos uh try to make it as easy as possible and the third thing is the random word be flashed upon the screen on a random video throughout the month the month is got you know just a couple weeks left really we're down to like almost two weeks uh less so if you're the first person to notice that video and you're the first person to comment it you will win a giveaway drawing so Thank you guys so much again. This is a little bit of a crazy video for me to make and put together. Uh, so I will see you in the comments where it will be absolute bloodshed. Bye, guys. And remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Oh, you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. If you want to see a video with less controversy... Feel free to check out yesterday's video where we do the zone tier list. And, you know, I don't want to blow my brains out, uh, but I'm ready to, to head down to the comments, you know, battle ready and see what everyone thinks. So thank you guys so much and I'll catch you there. Bye, guys.